QuickBooks Online 2023. Enter billable time, add to invoice, and apply to job or project. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want both open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser and then selecting incognito window, typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars file is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. If you would like to change between the two views, you can go to the drop down in the cog up top and switch the views down below. We're going to open a few tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it, right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it. I see how I duplicated that process. I'm going to go to the tab to the middle and then we're going to go to the reports on the left hand side, open up one of the favorites. That's the balance sheet. You know what it's going to be, the balance sheet. And if you're in the business view, by the way, you can find the reports and the business on the left hand side, the business overview, and then the reports tab. Okay, let's tab to the right and go to the reports again. Open up the profit and loss like we do every time. Close up the boogie and then change the range from 01, 01, 23, tab, 12, 31, 23, tab, run it, refresh it, and then tab to the middle, boogie close, boogie close, and then 01, 01, 23, tab, 12, 31, 23, and run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. We now want to be talking about entering time uh, from our employees, for example. Now, first, let's take a look at a flowchart to think about why we would want to do this and when it might be applicable for what type of industry uh, might use it. So let's go to the flowchart. This is the desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at the flow here. Now, the first reason would be for payroll purposes. So if we had, for example, hourly employees, we would need to get their time in some way, shape or form. But that's not typically the only reason we would want to track time. Many kinds of companies might also want to track the time so they can use it to add to the invoice to bill the clients based on time. So let's first think about the payroll situation. We set up payroll within QuickBooks. If we have hourly employees, we're gonna have to collect their hours in some way, shape, or form. We can do this multiple different ways. We might just have them uh, enter the time into the system on a manual, or they might just give us the time in an Excel sheet or in a Word document or whatever, another program. As we process the payroll, we can just enter the time in that way. So that, that would work, that would be fine. Or we can have them enter the time in the timesheets, approve the time, and then the timesheets will automatically pull over as we process the payroll. And, and so we can use that method and that method works as well. Now, sometimes we might want to get a little bit more intrusive <laughs> as the employer and actually track them kind of like they're on the clock with the old tick and you know, where they clock in and I can actually see that they're logged in on working at that point in time. So we can use, there's another uh, system within QuickBooks that you can use to actually track them and possibly even see where their location is when they're logged in and notify you if they've gone into overtime uh, or any of that kind of stuff. So we'll touch into that, but that's going a little above and beyond what we're gonna get into in detail right here. But you can look into that uh, for more options, which will not only give you the time, but also give you that more tracking features and whatnot and notifications and all that kind of stuff. And then we might use the time in order to uh, populate and bill invoices. 
Now this will usually be done in like a job cost kind of system, which might be a construction company, for example, but oftentimes like service businesses are structured this way as well in a job cost system. And that classic accounting firm, a CPA firm, a law firm, for example, might have partners. And then the partners are gonna be using the staff who they're gonna be working, working to death. <laughs> and then they're gonna bill their clients based on the work of the staff. So note that the staff then might be might be salaried employees, right? We might be paying them a salaried employee so that we don't really need their time necessarily to pay them. We need their timesheets in order to populate so we can bill the clients based on. If you ever see that 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 movie, I guess it's a little old now. It's called The Devil's Advocate where you had a lawyer that was they were a firm for the mob and he didn't know and all this kind of stuff. And the guy tell, tells the new lawyer one time, he's like, I don't even care if you're just thinking about a client in the taxi. You've got to build the client, right? That's how we make money here. So that's going to be that's going to be the idea here. And then the question is, if that's the system we have, then the question is, if Adam is my customer or is my employee, am I going to bill Adam based on a standard rate, which will not necessarily be his hourly rate, because we're at least going to mark up his hourly rate. It's going to be a rate specific to Adam based on what Adam does, like $100 an hour for Adam's work or something. Or are we going to try to bill based on what Adam has done and apply rates based on what he did? In other words, he did bookkeeping. Therefore, I'm going to bill out on a rate applied to the bookkeeping work versus tax work or something like that. So that's going to be the basic structure that we're thinking about. That in mind, let's go back to our QuickBooks and look at the tools we have to do that. So one tool to enter the timesheets, obviously we got payroll turned on if we're gonna be processing payroll, but even if you're not processing payroll, if you're entering time for whatever reason, if they're contractors maybe or something, you can use that time tracking system. And so we're gonna say, okay, in here, we've got the entering of the timesheets. Actually, it's not here, what am I talking about? It's in the plus button. And then we've got the single time activity or the weekly time activity. So we have that. And then we have the other tracking option, which is un under the time on the left-hand side. If you're in the business view, by the way, and it's not in the sample company, it might not be in the sample company, but it's gonna be in the get paid and paid area. And then you got the get paid and then you've got your time on the left-hand side. So I'll just go through this quickly here, but you've got a nice little video that gives you a recap, but it says access your premium time tracking. Your subscription includes time tracking powered by QuickBooks uh, time. So you can save big on time and money. Here's QuickBooks time, improve the payroll process. Workers can clock in or out anywhere on any device, get overtime alerts in real time to eliminate surprises because overtime can obviously cost more because you're required to pay time and a half oftentimes in some places or double time possibly create schedules by shift or job so if you were to launch this item it's going to op open up in another window so we're opening up in another window which is your time uh, information now and i'm not going to go into it in detail but you can you could basically look at your options here which allow you to to track basically where people are and do a lot more in terms of people clocking in because you're now in a web-based system so they can actually clock in and you can actually see who's clocked in and whatnot. You can actually even see their location and kind of get alerts as to if they're going into overtime. So you can say, hey, don't do that because you're gonna charge me time and a half or that's good, we're good to do that, keep, keep rolling. And so that's gonna be that one. Now, if we go into our payroll here and our employees, which is on the payroll on the left-hand side, if I go into my employees, close up the ham boogie, then even if I was to go into Hamilton, who is a salaried employee, then I still have my options up here, right? You've got the QuickBooks time, so I can send an invitation for that. And then you've got the QuickBooks workforce to send that, that information uh, as well. So the time tracking, they'll, it says they'll track and record their hours so you don't have to. That could be a, a useful tool. And then here we have uh, the workforce information that we talked about when we set up the employee. All right, given that, I'm gonna go back to the hamburger. Let's go back to just the dashboard and we're gonna enter the time on our side to see how this would all work out. So I'm gonna hit the plus button up top 
and we're gonna enter the weekly time. So again, we could have the employees do this or we could do it uh, based on Excel sheets that they give us or something that records their weekly time. However, we have the system set up. So we're gonna go into the timesheets and then we're gonna enter the detail on the timesheet. So I'm gonna set the date range. Let's set the date range. I'm gonna to go to the like the last week in the year in the first month that we're in, which is 122, uh, 23 to, to 128. So it's all in uh, 2020, uh, the first month in January. Okay, so then we'll set the details up top, choose a customer so or job. So if the time was done for a customer, meaning I'm gonna use this information in order to pull it in to an invoice, then we're gonna need the customer or job. Now we set up a job, which was 3005, one of the jobs we set up. So I'm gonna use that job, which is which is connected to the customer of Jones Guitars that we set up in a prior presentation. And if you're using a job cost system, that might be the case. For example, if you're a bookkeeping firm, you might have Jones as your client and then you're doing tax work for them or something like that. You might set up a separate job or separate project. If you're a law firm, you might have a client that you do multiple uh, jobs for that you're setting up the jobs separately in. Okay, choose the service uh, that was worked on. So here's where you have the option of saying, do I want to pick uh, an item and bill out? So I'm, I'm choosing my items now. Do I wanna bill out on just an hourly rate? Meaning maybe I just have an hourly rate for this particular employee, which if I hit the drop down. I should be tracking, let's start with Adam. We're gonna have Adam that we're billing out for. So maybe I just make another item here, which will be Adam's hourly rate. So for whatever Adam did, or I might try to bill out Adam's time based on what Adam did. Like if he did a diagnostic, then I might just have the, the items out of hourly rate in this case, cause I'm tracking time based on what Adam did. So am I, am I gonna make my items based on Adam's time alone or based on what Adam did in terms of the rates? Let's make a new, a new one here and I'm gonna make it a service item and I'm gonna just call it Adam Hamilton time. And this is just gonna be the time I charge for him. I probably not spelling Hamilton right, but whatever. And then we're gonna put this, I won't put a category and then description and let's just say it's a hundred dollars hundred dollars that we're going to bill for adam and then the question is do we want to just put it into services or some other account i'll just keep it in services for taxes because it's a service item i'm going to say it's non-taxable for sales tax non-taxable item and we don't have any purchases so i'm going to save that looks good and then is it going to be billable yes that's the point i'm going to say it's billable it's pulling in the $100, it's not taxable, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna say on the time, let's say it was Friday, eight hours that he worked on this job on Friday. Now note that if if you, you were entering time for the entire week and you were Adam entering the time or you entering the time for Adam, then I could, if, if I had the same job that he worked on for multiple days, I could put another eight here, another eight here, or whatever he worked on that particular job for, for multiple days. But if he worked on a different job, that's of course when I'm gonna need you know another line item. So down here, I'm gonna pick another line item. And this time, I'm gonna try to pick the project. So in a prior presentation, we were looking at the differences between making a job, which is a, a sub customer, is what it's called in online, a job in the desktop version. Now we're gonna look at the project, which is similar to a job, but that's the newer kind of thing that helps us track in a project format. So I'm gonna pick Sam the Guitar Man, but this time a project. Once again, it's a project which is kind of subordinate in a similar way as the sub customer or jobs to Sam the Guitar Man, who, who is in essence who we're gonna be billing for, the actual customer. Now this is gonna be, this is gonna be also Adam's time. That's gonna be the item that we're gonna use. It is gonna be billable, so it's gonna pull over to that customer. And then I'm gonna put this on Saturday. So there's there's the idea, there's the total timesheet. This is all I'm gonna enter for the, their time. 
but you can see the idea here. You can enter a timesheet weekly and you can just populate this again, one, one line. If you work the same job for multiple lines, every time you have another job, then of course you're going to need another line in order to enter the other job. This then could be used to pull over to the payroll, but we're really focused in on now pulling this over to billing it, creating an invoice for this job for Jones Guitars, the client customer, and then this project for Sam, the guitar man. So let's go ahead and record it. So down below you've got cancel, you've got copy last time sheet. If you can use that as a start and you could save it. And then the option save and new or save and close. I'm going to go to the save and close. And then let's just make one invoice with this to see the next process. Our main point is now I'm going to invoice and this would be done in a job cost system like a law firm or a bookkeeping firm, possibly weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. And we're going to say, okay, based on the timesheet, I'm going to pull in this information to 3005. There's our sub, our sub customer. And, and so I'm going to go tab. So the information pulls in. It says, hey, you've got this. I'm paraphrasing, of course. I've, you've got this item to add here for the billable time. I'm going to go great. Pull that in because that's what we're trying to do here. And then tab, 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 30 day. And we'll say, let's say the date is on 01323. And so let's keep that at the date. And, and then it pulls in the time down below. So it pulled in the time. Notice that this is an item that is now pulled in that we made. We made that item particularly for Adam to bill out Adam's time. And we're billing out the eight hours here for that particular uh, job that went to this particular client. The rate is $100, which was populated in the item that we set up for Adam. And, uh, and then the amount, and then it's not taxable because the item said it wasn't taxable. It's got this link showing that it came from the billable item. So what's this gonna do? It's an invoice, increase accounts receivable. The other side, go into the revenue account driven by the item, service revenue, no taxes applied. Also, we're gonna have the sub ledger for the receivables impacted because now this customer is gonna owe us and it's gonna be applied to the job so we could run reports, you know, uh, by the job or the sub customer. So let's save and close that and check it out. So if I save and close it, I can go to the tab to the right and I can refresh. And then of course, in the accounts receivable, we should have scrolling down. There's the 800 there. That looks right. Looks like what I would expect. If I go to the income statement and refresh, then we should have service revenue going into the service revenue and there it is there's the service revenue that looks good scrolling back up going back and then notice we can also kind of sort this report if i went to the total only or you can make another report and sort it by customer and run it and so now you've got this information uh broken out by customer and you can kind of see this information for the job here that's been broken out of uh, 3005. And if I go to this first tab and I go down to my to my sales information and I was going to go to my customers and close out the customers, then for Jones Guitars, we've got the actual item in here. So if I was to say I've got uh, open invoices, three of them. And so there we have Jones Guitars uh, and the sub for the sub customer or job. And so there's the detail for it where we have our, our invoice and our time. So there's the time charge and the invoice. So you get that nice detail. The time charge is now closed because we've built it out uh, on the invoice. So it gives you that indication that, that it has that open time or when we charge the time so that it'll give you a little reminder in there that we need to be invoicing out the time that has been billed on the timesheet. We're now going to look at another way we use that billable item and we're going to look at the settings first and see something to be careful of. So I'm going to go to the cog up top and I'm going to go to the account settings and then we're in the expenses tab on the left hand side. I'm going to go into the billable, uh, the bills and expenses. So we have that billable check mark that we've been using where it says down here, make expenses and items billable. And then you've got the markup capacity 
And the thing we want to be careful of is where it says track expenses and items as income. Notice if you don't do that, then it, you, it could cause you problems. So let me check that off. And, and just to show you what I mean, you have to be careful of this, meaning I'm going to close this out. I'm going to use the other format of having something be billable, which is often done in like a construction company or something like that, where you're going to have expenses that you're going to be applying out to a job or sub customer or a project. And then you're going to use that billable item. So let's go. I'm going to go up top and say, okay, let's now make a check form. For example, I'm just going to make a check form. I'm going to call it a check. And I'm going to use that billable capacity because I'm going to say that this expense that I paid, I want to pull over and then invoice the customer for it. So I'm going to say it's a check that went to, let's say office depot, we'll say, and then it's coming out of the cash account, the date, let's make it 130. The check number, I'm going to bring it up to the 14, 1014. The check number is a little off because we made a change to the check numbers uh, in a prior presentation. So I think that's the proper check number at this point. And then we're going to go down and say the category, let's just say is supplies. Supplies, and it's going to be an expense account for supplies. And then the amount we'll say is 130. And then the key here is I'm going to say it's billable. I'm not going to say that we're going to tax on it. We're just going to say it's billable, which means I'm going to pull it into the client when I make when I make an invoice. Now, again, we have the option of using either the sub customers. We could charge it to just a customer, but if we if we have jobs, then we could use the sub customer, which is like a job or the new kind of project form. I'm going to go into Sam, the guitar man and use the project component here. So we'll use the project there so it's under sam the customer and then we made a project which was project two for it so this will be an expense it's going to decrease the checking account the other side is going to go to supplies expense as we would expect but then we're going to we're going to turn around and we're going to create an invoice now the problem is that we didn't really use an item notice we just applied it to an account here so this billable thing doesn't have an item which is usually what we used to pull it into an invoice. And that means we have some limitations in terms of how it's going to be recorded when, when we pull it over now. So it could just go into an income account, or if we, if we don't have that checkoff that we did in the preferences, it might make a negative expense. And that's what I want to just point out and be careful of, because that's not usually what you want to have happen. So let's save it and close it. And then obviously if I go to that transaction, balance sheet account, just like what we would expect the checking account should go down, right? We got the decrease to the checking account for the check that we made right there. And the other side, if I go back is on the expenses, let's go back to just the total here and then run it. And then we should have an expense of supplies within supplies. We've got that 130 right there. That looks normal. Let's go back. And now we're going to bill out for that amount. So I'm going to go to the first tab and hit the plus button and we're going to make an invoice and let's make the invoice now for the job or the project under Sam, the guitar man project two. Then we have these items that want to be added for the billable items on the right. And so then I'm going to say add, let's just add all of them. So I'm going to add all ones for the timesheets that we put in and the others for that supplies item. So I'm going to, I'm going to have the date at 1:30. That's fine. Let's keep that. And then down here, notice the time pulls in beautifully and notice that we used an item to do the time, even though we used kind of that billable linking function, it still uses an item giving us a lot of control over the account that's going to be impacted on the income side of things, we can see it's linked. And notice here, it doesn't give us an item or a product or service. And that's, that's the issue. That means we have a far less control over where QuickBooks is going to put it. It's pulling in this billable thing. And be, because it's linked to the expense account, it, it doesn't have, we don't have as much flexibility because it's not using an item. That's the problem. So we could have had it just go to an income account. That's what we would typically want. If you don't have that checked off, it might have a reimbursement of the expense, which it's going to do here, which I'm going to say is not really what we wanted to do. That's the point. 
And also notice it's linked. So you could see the link in order to put the description. It would be nice if it put a description supplies. We, we When we add the billable item, we might want to add the description uh, of the account that's aff affected or so on. So it could pull this over, but you can go to the link to find it. So what's this going to do? Well, it's an invoice. It's going to increase the accounts receivable. Other side's going to go to the revenue account for this amount driven by the item. But this amount, because we turned it off, we turned off that automatic revenue and there's no item that we can use to tell it where to go is going to be going to uh, maybe reimbursing an expense account, which is not exactly what we want. Let's check it out. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to save it and close it. And then I'm going to go to the tab to the right and refresh it. And then I'm going to go into the accounts receivable and we should have that project. So there's uh, the project. So that looks good. The full amount increasing there. The other side, if I go to the P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income statement, and I open up the services, this is including the amount that was that was from here. This one from the 800 portion of the invoice for the time that we charged, which looks good. The 130 though isn't there. Instead, if I go back on up, it's going to be under the supplies and look what it did here. It went, it did a reimbursement kind of thing. The supplies went up and then it went back down. So the, the net impact on net income, I've seen some accounts set up like this. This is why I want to point it up, point it out because the net impact on net income will be the same. So you might say, well, what's the big deal? It, it went up and it went back down because I got reimbursed by the client for the thing because I added it onto the invoice. But that's not usually what we want to do. Usually what we want to do is add what we got in revenue up on the income side and then add the, and then subtract the expenses down below. That's what you want on your tax return typically. You don't want it. You can't tell the IRS basically, yeah, well, supplies is netting down to 500 because I paid for some supplies and then they reimbursed me for the supplies. That's not, even though the net amount at the bottom is the same, what you typically want is to say, yeah, as part of my billing process, I charged them for the things I used in the billing process. Therefore, I want revenue to go up for the total I charged them, including the expenses I did in the job and then subtract out the the supply so i'm going to keep that as it is right now but i just want to point that out as something that you that you don't typically want to do so there's a couple ways to fix that we could try to use items which give us more control or we can we can go up to the cog up top and again into the accounting and settings and then on the expenses tab over here we want to make sure that that this and i think it is now checked off by default that we're going to say track billable expense expenses and items to income so you have a single account or in multiple accounts now this gives you a little bit more flexibility because again you would think that it should now pull in to an income account but it's still not completely flexible because like if i go back in here and i look at that and i look at that item right there and and if i look at it i still don't have a product or service this is the thing right here that usually allows us to tell more specifically which income account it's going to hit so quickbooks may still have to use kind of like a generic income account for all the billable items that it's pulling over into the invoice which might be fine but again we don't have that, that as much control as we do if we were able to use items in order to create you know the invoices and the sales receipts so let's do it again and let's see the difference. I'm going to close this out and then I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to the first tab again and let's make another one. I'm going to go to the plus button and I'm going to do another check up top, another check again and repeat a similar process. Office Depot out of the checking account, same date, numbers correct now. It's trying to memorize the last transaction, which is nice. This time, let's make it for 200 just to switch things up a bit. I'm going to make it billable again, but now I've changed the options. And this time I'm going to put it to that 3005, which was the sub, uh, the sub customer. So let's do it to that one this time. And so that looks good. Let's save it and close it. This is going to record a decrease to the checking account. The other side going into supplies. That's good. The point we want is 
to pull it into the billable item uh, after that. So I'm gonna save it and close it. And then let's make an invoice. I won't check the transaction because we should. the transaction is fairly obvious on that one. Let's go to the invoice now and say we went to job 3005. 3005. So now it wants to pull that in again. So we're gonna say, all right, add that, add that one over, por favor. And then everything looks good. Notice that down here, it's still, I should have added in the description that it was office supplies, so it pulls over. So I'm gonna put supplies here so that they can see the description. Notice again, though, it's, it doesn't give us as much control, but hopefully even though I don't have an item, QuickBooks can then apply it to an income account, at least picking an income account to put it to as opposed to decreasing the expense account. So that's gonna be the goal. This will increase accounts receivable. The other side hopefully go into an income account that QuickBooks is gonna make up, not based on the item, but based on the fact that we said it was billable and we want you to put it into an income account. So let's save it and close it. Go to the tab to the right and then run it. And then if I go into the A to the R, we can see this one went up. That looks good. Let's go back and then tab to the right and run it. Actually, let's go back to the reports and then run it. And then now you've got this other income account. So they made up an income account, billable expense income account. So that's nice, but again, you don't have a lot of flexibility to change that. That might be more than fine though. You might say, hey, I don't need any more flexibility to that. As long as it's in an income account, I'm happy. But if you needed more flexibility than that, you'd need to come up with a system where you can use items to apply to the accounts you want, possibly that being like services, for example. Now, another method that you can try here is to set up an item, but it's a little bit more complex for most people, I think, to when they're, when they're setting it up. But if you wanted more control, you can try when you're entering the expense or check side of things, for example, to instead of uh, just adding a category here, you can try to add an item. So let's say you're paying the same supplies expense. You can basically set up the item and say, I'm going to make a new item down below. And I want it to be like a non inventory item so that it's not tracking the units of inventory, but it's going to have both and like an expense side of things and as well as a, a sales side of things. And then if you were to say that the item uh, name is going to be supplies, Let's say that you're gonna pull over and then the category, uh, we'll keep the category there. I'm gonna put this description supplies. I'm not gonna put an amount here because I'm gonna populate the amount every time. And then on the income, maybe I want it to go to services and that gives me the control. That's where the control is. I can put it to services as opposed to the billable income or whatever they use. I'll say it's non-taxable. So I could say it's a non-taxable item and then on the purchasing side of things, I'm gonna have a cost. I won't put the cost here, but the purchase account, instead of going to purchases account or like cost of goods sold or something like that, I'm gonna put it to supplies expense. So let's say supplies, uh, office supplies, or I'll just put it to supplies. I think we've been using, and then I won't have a preferred vendor. So now, when I buy supplies from Office Depot, I can save this and I can then pull it in and I'm not gonna use the category and just record it to Office Supplies, but rather I'm gonna use the items and then I'm gonna make it a billable item. And the item is driving it on the cost side to post it to the right account, which is supplies. And then when I pull it over to the income account, the item now allows us to assign the proper item account we want to use, which was the revenue account that we used. So that's a workaround that could be that could be useful, but I think it's also got its own problems because of then obviously you have to use items as opposed to categories. It also causes some issues with the bank feeds because if you're populating your payments through the bank feeds, like many small companies will, it's more difficult to you to add an item in that case, you can, you can you only have the capacity possibly to add the account. So that's a but that's a method that could could be useful for some people if you want more control about the income account and to try to use the items in, con in conjunction with the billable thing. So just a, a, an idea to think about. I won't record this now though. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say, do you want to leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. Now the other thing we just touched on is the differences between 
If I go into the sales tab and the customers, we've got the customers that we set up in a prior presentation as a sub customer or a job would be the name from the old uh, or the other version, QuickBooks desktop version. And we saw that we can run reports, you know, by customer in here. And then we, we also have the projects which work in a similar fashion, although you can use them together because you might have like a customer and then an overarching job for them or a department. And then you might have the projects attached to like a sub customer or job, for example. But just to look at the projects over here, we, we then had some information for the project, which we mainly did to project number two. So if I go into project number two, now we've got the information related to it with uh, the, the income and uh, expenses that were assigned to project number two. And then it gives a, a, our recap. We have our reports. We've got the transactions that we can see here, invoices, uh, the billable expense, the check and the time charge time activity that we can look at project reports. If we want to see the reports themselves, we can have the attachments over here. And if I went into uh, the reports, the overall reports, then I can look at, we have this project, project profitability summary that you could, you could run that as well from, we'll do, take it from 010123 to 123123 and run that. So you also have you know, this report that you can take a look at. So the, the projects, this job cost kind of system as a whole, a whole nother thing, we do have courses on that in and of it themselves. Be careful when you're thinking about the different tools that you can use. You got all these cool tools now. You've got jobs, which are now sub customers. And you also have now the, the class tracking, location tracking, tags, and now the projects tools. So whatever you're planning to do, you want to make sure that you're picking the tool that you think is, is best applied to whatever it is you're planning uh, to do. And there's all these tools have some overlap so that it's possible, possible, it's possible to do a lot of different things, possibly different ways. Uh, so you, so, which is great, but it can also lead to paralysis when you're trying to figure out how you're going to be putting things together. So you kind of want to think it through when you start out with these different tools and how to apply them to what it, whatever it is you're doing. So let's take a look at the trial balance now. We've been going for some time here. Let's open up a trial balance and see where we stand at this point in time. I'm gonna go to the reports, type in the trial balance, the trustee T to the B, change the range from 010123 to 123123, run it to refresh it, close up the hand boogie. If your numbers match our numbers, great. If not, try to expand the range and drill down on any differences to see if you can find uh, what they are. If it's a date issue, possibly you can just change the date, which you can do in a practice problem, but be careful doing that in practice. And then uh, in after we enter all the data in a month's worth of data input, we will run transaction detail reports, which hopefully can further drill down on any differences.